how would you like to raise these issues with uh, the, 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 the patients with whom you're dealing? And, and how do you think primary care now becomes the, the focus of uh, these, these therapeutic developments as the field is, is moving forward? Thank you so much, Barry. I think that these papers um, and what you're seeing, the pattern of who's getting these medications, they don't show anything particularly new when we talk about how medicine is then translated into clinical practice and clinical outcomes, right? How people access healthcare is not specific to that person. It's all about the system that we're working in, right? Where are these institutions. It's not a mistake that it's mostly urban patients that are getting this. That's because that's where these institutions are. If we look where healthcare is a big shortage, where are hospitals closing? Where are clinics closing? They're closing in rural areas, right? Um, and so you have to come, but I'm a little bit outside of Boston, but I'm still in a fairly urban area. You have to come to Boston. You have to go to New York, you have to go to Philly, you have to go to places where the institutions are, right? So access to the medications, access to people who can diagnose you, right? Where are the neurologists? Um, it's hard enough to get an appointment with a neurologist in an urban area. Um, try going someplace in the suburbs. So I was going a little bit further out. Um, and then do these neurologists accept my insurance? Uh, the testing that's necessary to get the medications, um, the amyloid PET test, right? I priced one out last night after reading the article, um, and I came up with about $3,000 for the PET scan itself, right? This does not include the radiologist who is going to read it. And this is, I, I was going through and I decided to put it into some insurers uh, to see if it was covered, um, and Medicare says, yes, we cover 20 with a 20% coinsurance. So that's $600. And that's after. So depending on your plan, if your deductible for the year is $3,000, you may be paying $3,000 for this test, or you may be paying $3,600 because you already spent $3,000 on the tests on another test someplace else. Um, the genetic testing is about $300 to do. Some nonprofit organizations, like I saw the Alzheimer's um, disease organization, will mail you the test for $125. Um, but a lot of times, if you can't access this and this is not covered by insurance, you may be out of pocket for that $300, right? Or where do you get that test done? Now you have to find a Quest lab somewhere to go. So the, these disparities are built into the infrastructure on how people are accessing care. And that's going to trickle down to their primary care doctor, who's going to look at them and say, your insurance is not going to cover this. So I'm not even going to bother to fight the fight for this PET scan, right? And now we're gonna have more people who maybe they can't access a neurologist, so they're dependent on their primary care. Primary care doesn't have the access to give them the testing. And then like you said early, earlier in your introduction, now you have the medication, but you have to come for an infusion and you can't travel. You can't go to your great, you know, your granddaughter's graduation. Right. We see this with dialysis patients um, who, if they want to travel, it, it's quite cumbersome. Right. And so it may may be possible, a lot more possible with dialysis. Right. Because if you're in like a DeVita, theoretically, you can get set up with a DeVita somewhere else. Um, but these medications, how they're um, supported, where they're given can really limit who can get it, when they can get it, how often they can get it. Can they get testing? Um, and so in order to see patients get this, these medications, we have to break down those barriers. Um, and, you know, you, you brought up some really great ideas in your email about like cutting out certain testing for people. Um, how do we also think about expanding neurologic care? Uh, we are now seeing more neurologists using telehealth, um, you know, and then are there services more available that way? How can we reach these patients outside of the small communities that it's no mistake 
that these patients in these small urban well healed communities can access these medications because the system is made to support those type of environments and those type of patients. So um, I think that was a long answer to your question <laughs> about how we can eventually help primary care doctors by breaking down barriers for their patients to get testing and how we can think about expanding access to the medications and the people who can get them the medications in all different parts of the country.